It's been a rough time in the world of football as May brought yet another sexual abuse scandal. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the allegations against Oscar Julian Ruiz and some of the other recent scandals that occurred in football. With that as a launching point, we'll consider why these things happen in football and what could be done to stop them. First, FIFA World Cup referee and instructor accused of sexual abuse. The Ethics Committee at FIFA has launched an inquest into allegations of sexual abuse and harassment against Oscar Julian Ruiz. Also facing an investigation is Amir Mikado, former referee and current director of the Referees Commission at the Federación Colombiana de Football, Colombia's football governing body. Ruiz has had a 16-year tenure as a referee at FIFA and had the honor to officiate at the 2002, 2006, and 2010 World Cups. He's been working as a refereeing instructor since June 2011, and the accusations stem from this time period. There are 11 victims accusing him, and more than 30 witnesses. This isn't Ruiz's first dip in hot water. These accusations come from an application by Harold Perea to review a 2019 investigation by Colombian authorities. At the time, he was facing claims of raping a minor and harassing three other referees. Perea alleges that not only were those claims true, but the problems with Ruiz went further and deeper than was previously found. As for Mikado, he's been accused for sexual abuse in the same application by Harold Perea. Mikado is accused of fostering a culture where referees can only reach international status by having sex with higher-ups and allowing themselves to be sexually degraded by instructors like Ruiz. This is in addition to abuses that Mikado has personally allegedly committed. Responding to the claims, Ruiz insisted that none of the facts are consistent with reality. He points out that in his 16-year career at FIFA, where he has conducted 200 activities in various roles on an international level, he has never faced such an accusation. Mikado and the FCF have declined to comment on the accusations against him. FIFA, meanwhile, confirmed to reporters that their ethics committee is investigating the accusations, but otherwise did not comment on any developments. Next, another scandal FIFA is currently tackling. Oscar Ruiz's case isn't even the first such scandal FIFA has had to deal with this year. In December 2021, they were already investigating a sexual abuse case in Gabonese football. The allegations center on Patrick Asomo Ai, better known as Capello. He was a coach for Gabon's under-17 football team, and in that position, he was accused of rape and sexual assault of his players, who were minors. His crime spanned three decades, and 30 players have spoken up about the abuses they faced in an interview with The Guardian. He's currently sitting in jail and faces charges of sexual assault and endangerment of lives of minors. The penalty he is facing could be up to 30 years in prison. Capello's fall inspired victims to speak out against other officials in Gabonese football. Two other coaches, Orfi Makala and Trifel Mabika, had been accused of the same crimes as Ai. Meanwhile, Fegafoot president Pierre-Alain Mangwengui is now in the hot seat for failing to denounce crimes of pedophilia, a charge he has roundly denied. The picture that these scandals paint is of rampant pedophilia in Gabonese football. Victims have told horrifying stories of abuse from coaches, who claimed that it was all for purposes like improving their presence of mind. They were also forced to act in pornographic films that were in circulation on the dark web. Managers and coaches at clubs throughout Gabon are accused of similar crimes, as are various other officials at Fegafoot. Sadly, it looks like sexual exploitation is part and parcel of football in Gabon. While FIFA is currently investigating the three coaches and working with Fegafoot, on an investigation into Mount Guengui, these incidents are just the tip of the iceberg. Can FIFA crack down on these activities throughout the country? It will all depend on how this case goes. Are scandals endemic to football? The two scandals we talked about before are just two examples among so many that seem to plague the world of football. This very month, FIFA imposed a 10-year ban on Nella Joseph, the supervisor of the under-20 team in the Haitian Football Association. She was found guilty of failing to protect the physical and mental well-being of her players. Oh, and she also forced them to have sexual relations with association president Yves Jean Bart. Jean Bart himself has already been banned for life for exploiting the young players, and other members of the Haitian Football Association are being investigated. Going back to last October, head coach Paul Riley of the North Carolina Courage was sacked amid allegations of sexual abuse and harassment. League commissioner Lisa Baird resigned as well. This was quickly followed by Australian player Lisa Devana's revelation
information about a toxic culture in her football scene, and right after that, 24 Venezuelan under-20 players charged their coach with also creating a toxic culture. At the time, FIFA's chief education and social responsibility officer told CNN that she anticipated many more such stories to emerge across the football world, which encompasses the actual world. She was not wrong about that. In just this short decade, there have been so many cases of sex crimes in football to reasonably list in a video like this. What we'll do instead is try to figure out why this keeps happening and what steps FIFA and other people in positions of power could take to make football an inviting and inclusive sport free of exploitation. And now, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Many of the problems that impact football throughout the world have to do with the hierarchy in global football. Although FIFA is the independent body that governs global football, at the national level, each country has its own authority that's responsible for everything related to their game. From talent scouting to coaching to actually sending teams to international tournaments, these departments basically hold the keys to the football kingdom. If you're a young player who aspires to play in a league or in the World Cup, you have to go through them. But if the governments don't maintain oversight of their football agencies, things run the risk of getting ugly. Coaches and managers get paid handsomely for their work. And if corruption is a general fixture of the country, there's more money to be made. They also hold tremendous power over young players, which creates an opportunity for the players to be exploited by higher ups. Keeping a check on these agencies is crucial, and accountability is the only way you can be sure that these players are working in a safe environment. Who's really responsible for protecting footballers? FIFA is the common denominator in all these stories, and that's for a reason. For over a century, FIFA has worked to make itself the one and only arbiter of all things related to football. In so many of these cases, it can seem as though FIFA has more power to bring down the hammer on abusers than the national governments. After all, to receive a lifetime ban from football should be a worse punishment for a coach than anything a government could do. The problem for FIFA, though, is that they can't set up a football police station in every country in the world. They have no way to keep a direct, constant check on what's happening in clubs and stadiums in every single city. We're not saying that they should be able to meddle in affairs at the national and local levels, but right now, if you're a victim of abuse, your best recourse is to reach out to FIFA. And maybe that's how things should be. This course of action would be perfectly fine if FIFA takes prompt and decisive action in every case. But so often, that's just not how things play out. Is FIFA really right for the job? So the first thing that we should probably get out of the way is that FIFA itself isn't perfect. Indeed, it's ironic to ask this organization of all organizations to police corruption in football when its own corruption is legendary in sports. The 2015 scandal that ruined the careers of FIFA executives, national football managers, and even politicians comes to mind. And of course, questions of bribery and kickback still surround Russia and Qatar's 2018 and 2022 bids for the World Cup. And while our overview of the Ruiz and Gabon scandals concludes with FIFA taking action, the story can often be more complicated than that. In the Haiti case we mentioned earlier, a FIFA staffer gave Yves Jean Bart a tip-off regarding the allegations that he was about to face. Other leaks in the case lead to threats and harassment against the victims, who thought their identities were being protected. And while Yves Jean Bart was eventually brought to justice, as were the other offenders, it took a really long time and caused a lot of anxiety to the whistleblowers. This is far from ideal when it comes to the kinds of cases FIFA has to deal with, and you'd really expect better from them. Alas, this isn't the only time it's happened. Almost every time FIFA is called upon to enact justice upon corrupt officials and abusers, and their response is slow and riddled with mistakes, every time. The moral of the story is that FIFA needs to be better. National football authorities need to be better, and as always, football fans should pay attention to these stories and support victims in any way they can. That's all for today. What are your thoughts on today's stories? Voice your opinions in the comments below and make sure to like, share, and subscribe.